Scientists and researchers in Zimbabwe agree that climate change exists and it is worldwide. In Zimbabwe, it is predicted that it will cause an average rise in temperatures to rise about 3 degrees Celsius before the end of the century. The annual rainfall could decline by 5% and 18%, especially in the southern part of Zimbabwe. Rainfall will become more variable. There will be an increase in droughts, floods and storms. Change is, is a reality and it is, uh, uh, it is here now. And it's one of the things that we cannot avoid. It's not of our own making. So what we need to do is to prepare our communities for um, them to be able to adopt to uh, the uh, climate change and uh, it, 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 it is disrupting lives, disrupting the practice that we are used to in agriculture, climate change is bringing new diseases that we need also to understand and we need also to be able to respond to them. Climate change is affecting food security, it affects, it's affecting all the facets of, 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 our, of our people, of our communities, of our nation. So it's, it's something that we really wanted to want to do. It is a, it's a new phenomenon it's in the, uh, that we new, need new knowledge to deal with. This is the reason why you see we as universities were trying to come together from different disciplines, from different backgrounds to say, hey, we have challenges here, our community is facing serious challenges. What is it that we want to we need to do? What new research do you want to come up with? What new insights do you want to, to bring up through research? And so that we become relevant and become solutions to the people as, as challenges. That's why we, I think it's very important now for the scientific community to be very proactive, if possible, to find ways of uh, reducing the effects of climate change to also come up with ways, new ways of adopting to climate change, and more importantly, new ways of even mitigating against the if, uh, uh, to mitigate against the climate, the climate change. So it's very, very important for us, even as academics, for us to be able to communicate this through our lectures, through our teaching, that uh, climate change is reality, and we need to also try to start building the caliber students, uh, uh, practitioners that we send out there with the full knowledge that climate change is affecting every facet of life and uh, people need to be very, um, to be prepared for, for it. Hey, my name is Lenar Paranganda. I'm a PhD student from Duga University and also a lecturer at the State University School of Social Work. I am studying on how female-headed households are building resilience to the effects of climate change on household food security. So during my preliminary findings, I have managed to find out that female-headed households food security has been heavily affected by climate change and variability, long dry spells, droughts, reduced rainfall is negatively affecting the female-headed household's ability to secure household food in a number of ways. One, in terms of crop production, where yield becomes reduced inherently, resulting in reduced household food and also animal production due to continued loss of livestock due to hunger and lack of water and also failure of livestock to reproduce at its capacity which then results in the inability of female-headed households to use livestock as an alternative strategy of securing household income to purchase food or even to consume as frequently as they did. Women also noted that wells now dry up quickly, which is also affecting consumption of green vegetables.
Well, the, the, the change in climate, especially the increase in uh, temperatures and also the decrease in uh, rainfall, is actually resulting in the proliferation of uh, uh, vector-borne diseases. Not only vector-borne diseases, but all other diseases. But uh, of course, I, I carried out a study which uh, you know showed that uh, vector-borne diseases, especially in, in, in drier regions, uh, are actually increasing uh, in terms of uh, the, the number of cases uh, that are reported at uh, your, uh, you know, you know, facilities. Um, something has to be done in order to, to reduce the impact of uh, these uh, vector-borne diseases. Uh, because the challenge that we have now is that uh, the, the, the communities are to lack information about uh, these vector-borne diseases and they, they are linked with climate change. So there is need for a program that actually addresses climate change issues and also build resilience of our communities with regards to uh, their vulnerability to uh, vector-borne diseases. Uh, the Paris Agreement is a mechanism within it, uh, which we call the financial mechanism, uh, which uh, mandates developed countries to provide developing countries with uh, resources to, to, to fight climate change. So this international uh, climate finance is expected to be uh, used for, for community development projects that have a bearing on, uh, on making communities more resilient to climate change. Uh, we have uh, some examples of where this is happening throughout the country. Uh, I think in every district, in some communities, we now see a lot of these solar-powered uh, irrigation schemes uh, that are being uh, that are donor-driven uh, and that are helping communities to actually come out of um, out of poverty and also making them more resilient to uh, to climate change. Uh, and these resources are also expected to to be used for. Uh, encouraging the use of uh, renewable energies uh, that will actually ensure that the country migrates from uh, using a lot of uh, a lot of coal, uh, a lot of uh, 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 wood for, for 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 cooking or for um, or for for curing tobacco, and come up with technologies that are that are much better and much cleaner to the to the environment, and that assist in terms of. Uh, reducing the amount of greenhouse gases that go into the atmosphere and thereby reduce the, the, the impacts of, uh, of climate change. Then looking at other extreme weather events, uh, issues like Cyclone Idai, for example, uh, these resources are expected to make uh, these communities more resilient by coming up with strategic plans that will actually assist them uh, in terms of uh, planning uh, for the local authorities as well as coming up with structures that are actually climate resilient and activities and that enhance their livelihoods uh, and ensure that they have an income that comes from um, activities that are not prone to climate disasters. Uh, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change requires all countries that are party to the agreement to come up with um, climate change mitigation and adaptation measures. And uh, part of the mitigation measures um, for us as a country to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions that we emit from our economic activities. Um, and these greenhouse gases uh, include uh, carbon dioxide, uh, nitrous oxide, and, and methane. For us to be able to uh, reduce these greenhouse gases, we have come up with, uh, with policies and programs as a, as a country whereby we are actually encouraging the use of renewable energies um, and we are also coming up with policies that uh, make this possible. For example, there is the renewable energy policy which is being crafted by the Ministry of uh, uh, Energy and Power Development uh, which is supposed to come up, uh, come through any time from, from now which will encourage the use of uh, renewable energy sources so that uh, the country then moves towards uh, renewable energy and use less and less of fossil fuels uh, that we have been using and that have been blamed for polluting the atmosphere and causing climate change. The Paris Agreement itself uh, also makes provisions for the financing of um, 
uh, adaptation um, activities within uh, within developing countries, and these adaptation uh, activities they include um, coming up with the irrigation schemes, for example, in areas that are that are getting drier, but still we have some water underground or they have some some dams and some rivers that flow throughout the year, so that communities do not depend on rain-fed agriculture and they can be able to feed themselves throughout the um, throughout the year, whether there's a drought or, or there's no drought. So the, those are just uh, but examples of uh, what we are doing in terms of uh, implementing the Paris Agreement in Zimbabwe. Uh, my name is Abraham Muzulu. I'm uh, with World Vision uh, International implementing an USAID funded uh, project which is in Mashingo and Manika land. Uh, we are working with communities uh, to increase, to help them increase uh, their absorptive, adaptive and uh, transformative capacity in terms of addressing issues to do with uh, climate uh, change. And uh, currently as we, have, we are experiencing some of the indicators of climate change, uh, such as uh, the recent cyclone which affected us, the frequent droughts, uh, these are having a negative impact in terms of uh, food security status of our smallholder farmers. So we encourage them to diversify their livelihood options, uh, to, do, to, involve, to be involved in uh, internal savings and lending, and also add the level options both on-farm and off-farm so that they become re more resilient uh, to these climatic shocks. Thank you.